Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of if <laughs> welcome to this episode of a spot of science. I'm Gus. I'm Chris. And I'm Sally. We did it perfect the first time, and we had gone again, and I messed it up. This episode of a spot of science is brought to you by Movement Watches. There it is. Thank you, Movement Watches, for sponsoring this episode of A Spot of Science. I absolutely love the watch they sent me. It's sleek, stylish, and I always get tons of compliments when I wear it out. Movement was started by two broke college kids that wanted to wear stylish watches but couldn't afford them, so they started their own watch company. The watches start at just $95. At a department store, you're looking at 400 to 500 bucks. Movement figured out that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup, providing the best possible price. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmtwatches.com slash science. That's mvmtwatches.com slash science. It's a good URL. Uh, join the movement. Ding. So we're going to dive right into it. Let's get going here. Question. Why can you train your grass to grow different lengths for different seasons, but we can't do the same thing with our hair and finger toenails? That was sent by Benjamin. Not my dog, Benjamin, but a, a human Benjamin. We the, assume. Yes. The reason you can do it with grass is because grass is simple-minded. Okay. And so it's more willing to, like, to do what you tell it to and train okay. it to, but your hair and your fingernails and things are... It's hard to convince yourself to like. They're part of a greater. They, your fingernails are just part of you, while grass Correct. is itself. So grass I, is not part I, of you. I have a question uh -huh. for you, Chris. Um, where you live, do you have trained grass? <laughs> well, no, I don't have grass. Have you ever seen trained grass? <laughs> is that a thing? I'm, are you aware of the concept of grass? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Do I have it? Have you ever seen it trained? <laughs> I thought. Wait, I picture like like at a circus, like a guy with like a stool and a whip, like fighting with the grass. It's like wait, it's, like, it's uh, December thirty first, January the first. Grow, grow, grow. <laughs> yeah. well, so is, was this a trick question? It's such a stupid question. I don't understand it. <laughs> They're asking why we can't train our nails and hair like you train grass. You can't train grass. I think so, maybe what they're getting at is how grass uh, stops growing in the winter. Like, it's not that it's trained, it's well, just- it doesn't, it, it just grows a bit slower. It turns yellow instead of green. That's only in Austin where you don't have any rain. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't- You can't train okay. grass. Right, yeah. So what's special about grass is that, so most plants grow from um, the apex, the very tip. And if you chop off the top, then um, because you have this thing called apical dominance, that's how it all starts um, branching out. And that's what you, why you're pruning your bonsai trees or whatever chopping off the top prevents it from growing in that direction so it has to grow in the other direction. Mm -hmm. What's really special about grass and why it's one of the most successful plants in the world, it was many species, but as a group, it's one of the most successful, is instead of growing from the top, it grows from the bottom, which means that if a herbivore eats the top of the grass, it hasn't eaten the growing bit because the base is the growing bit. So as long as you don't eat the base, it can still grow and keep on flourishing, oh. which is why grass can survive um, herbivory a lot better than other animals. And it's why you can make a lawn from it. Because if you just chop the top off normal plants, they'd be just like, dude, why are you chopping my head off? Yeah. Whereas grass doesn't really care. So just like you're saying grass is upside down then? Yeah, essentially. And it's like fingernails. So fingernails also grow from the base. Fingernails continuously grow. Um, they don't continue growing after your death, though. People think that because that's just because you've got a lot of moisture in your skin. And as you die, the moisture goes out of your skin, shrivels up and kind of draws back. So it makes your fingernail look longer, but it's just mm. your shin skin getting shorter. Um, hair, on the other hand, hair does have three different cycles. Um, if I can remember them correctly, you've got anagen, which is where it's growing, I think. Telogen is where it's uh, just resting and catagen is where it falls out. It's definitely allergen, telogen and catagen. I might have got them in the wrong order. But your hair is on a cycle. And we actually mentioned this with the male pattern baldness and chimpanzees mm -hmm. in the last series. Um, but so your hair has a period where it grows, a period where it stops growing and then a period where it falls out. And each hair is in a different, on its own cycle so that all of your hairs don't fall out at the same time. They're not, they're not like uh, cicadas. They don't wait They, they don't they synchronize. Don't synchronize <laughs> no. anyway that would suck. You'd have a big problem if they all synchronize, but that's why you can have hairs of different lengths because like on your skin versus on your head. It's because they, the cycles are different lengths. Or I've trained them all to <laughs> grow So yeah, lengths. so you, you haven't consciously trained them, but your, uh, your genetics have trained your hair according to different parts of your so, body. So I guess in summary, 
the basis for the question is flawed. Yes. Uh, but all of the every but that single one of these items right, thing. continue to yeah. grow and and grass. I did not know that about grass. So mm -hmm. if you're, is it possible? So if you shave every day, mm -hmm. every single Can't day. Can you tell I shave uh, every day? <laughs> but if you shave every single day, right? Yeah. Is your hair gonna grow faster? Oh, so this is yeah, that's actually or a really good. If point. you great shave like once a week, does your so loads of people want to know whether shaving makes your hair grow back faster? And loads of especially women think this because when you're shaving your legs, they're like, oh, it, it grows back faster if you shave. It doesn't because your hair, like grass, grows from the base. So what you do to the tip of the hair, like there's no way that the base, the growing part, the follicle knows what's happening at the tip. There's no kind of feedback mechanism. What happens is that normally your hair is ta very tapered at the end. So it goes to almost invisible. Mm -hmm. If you cut it flat off, you get a very like oh, blocky end. And that blocky end is more visible. So when that end grows back, it looks darker. My next, can I have one more follow up? All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm enjoying this. So, okay, I have a question with leg hair, right? So okay. with leg hair. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's compare leg hair. <laughs> I've got my hairy legs out because it's winter. <laughs> oh, oh, skinny jeans, not so easy. Um, so if, like, your hair only grows this this long, right? Yeah. So so long, right? Yeah. And then if you if you were to shave it though, yes, it would immediately start growing back. Correct, because it's continuously growing at the moment. But they're just parts that they just fall out at this length. So it will start. Each one will start growing, start growing, start growing, and then um, once it gets to the right length, it will just pause. And then just sit there for a bit and then eventually fall out. That's when it enters the next stage. That's when yeah. it enters the next stage. And so when you shave, there will be some hairs that won't grow back immediately because they're already in the pause stage. Mm -hmm. And there will be some that grow back um, straight away because they're still in the growing stage. Gotcha. Okay. You how do they know that to stop growing? Like why? How do they know to stop growing? Uh, so that will be um, changes inside the cell, inside the follicle. So the cell... Mm -hmm knows what stage of the cycle it's at and it gets signals the body sends signals to the cell saying okay this is your time to to change i'm gonna have to pull my oh these skinny jeans should not be pulled up this high <laughs> thanks, Ow, thank, just thanks get for, the circulation back to my foot thanks for that chris <laughs> all right we got an, another question here hello guys i've been wondering this for a while now how do dogs choose where to poop also why can it take them a long time to find a suitable place Thank you for your time, Wonderbread58. So it does seem like dogs sniff around a lot and circle before figuring out where to where to poop. What do you have to say about that, Chris? Well, dogs are emotional, um, and I think they will end all territorial, and they're but, sniffing around, um, looking for their their like what's this place that speaks to them personally, like where they like feel inclined to to poop, but also looking to make sure that they're not infringing on other territory of poop like other people like or maybe or maybe they're looking for places that other dogs have poop to reclaim their territory perhaps okay yeah pretty much i mean there's, there's no like place that oh my god this speaks to me you know on a poo level um it does to me. but no so that many of those parts were right yeah so they are quite emotional and um so you can you can kind of get dog performance anxiety so like if, cause a, a lot of what dogs do is being trained by humans. Like they are so in tune with humans. And so if a human has punished them for pooing in a certain spot, they will find it really difficult to poo in a similar spot. Um, similarly, if they've only been trained on say grass and you take them to the beach, they'll be like, but I'm only allowed to poo on grass. So they're in a way both very good and very bad at generalizing. Mm. So they're like, I have only pooed on grass, therefore I can only poo on grass. They don't realize that it's the outside bit that maybe they were being trained to do. So often they'll have been taught a certain thing. Um, smells, you're exactly right. The, like dogs are so scent oriented. Uh, everything is about smell. And so they'll often be sniffing around to try and smell who was in a certain area. So wolves, like you mentioned, um, they are very territorial and they will typically poo on the very edge of their territory as a scent marker. Um, mm. Dogs not so much on the edge of the territory because the dogs themselves don't really have a territory. There's, they have more of their own familiar turf um, rather than like one spot which they will defend to the death. Um, so yeah, so that was all pretty similar. And also dogs will wander around in circles often be both before sitting down and before pooing. And that's because they're used to living in long grasses 
And so if you wander around and round and round, oh. you're flattening the grass. <laughs> and so it both makes a softer place for them to sit down. If they're lying down, it flattens the grass to make their poo show up better so that other dogs <laughs> can smell it. Because it is very much a marker. It's like performance art. Yeah, it is like I need to have the perfect frame for, for my poo in the middle. Um, and it makes sure that there aren't any, like, I don't know, scorpions or stuff in the grass that could harm them. No. Oh. So while they're vulnerable, while they're squatting, yeah. you make sure that nothing's going to bite them in the ass. Exactly. Smart. The, um, I have a question then. My can hu- Is there ever been situations where humans do that with their poop, like mark their territory to like keep other tribes out? Or something. I don't know about humans marking their <laughs> like, territory because because we're not very good at smelling. Uh-huh. Um, we're okay at smelling, but for example, we're pretty bad at working out which direction things are from, even though we've got two nostrils. Uh-huh. And compared to a dog, our sense of smell is awful. We do have human like performance anxiety. Like there are very very many cases of people having terrible intestinal problems. Yeah. Um, because they don't want to poo in front of other people, for example. Like they would. Ru- it's almost like they would rather do serious damage to their own health rather than risk embarrassment. And yeah. the inner sphincter, so you have multiple sphincters inside your anus. Um, sphincter just means a ring of muscle that tightens and stuff. It pretty much its sole purpose is to avoid embarrassment because <laughs> what it does is make sure that you don't shit yourself uh-huh. when you shouldn't be shitting yourself. Well, we appreciate all the hard work yeah. that sphincters are <laughs> yeah. doing. Thank you very much for keeping me from shitting myself. All um, right, well... Thanks for watching, everybody. I think uh, we, we're we very enlightened now about uh, a couple of new topics. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, just email them to sciencespot at roosterteeth.com. <laughs>